Today on Locked On Red Wings, Detroit fans are wondering already, should the Wings be buyers or sellers? Your Locked On Red Wings, your daily podcast on the Detroit Red Wings. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Locked On Red Wings podcast. We are your hosts, Brian Fisher and Scotty Bentley. I'm a podcast producer over at the Daily J-A-W-W-J News Radio podcast. Guys, I did three straight episodes of the Daily J, Daily J while Zach was uh, out in Arizona. He was on vacation. So please give him a listen. Listen, help keep me employed. I did an episode on the Detroit Lions, what, uh, how Dan Campbell united not just the fan base, uh, but the city. Then I did an episode on Northville Downs closing. And then on Tuesday, I talked about whether or not Sheila Ford Hamp has revitalized the image of the Ford family to Detroit Lions fans. So give those a listen. You can catch them on the two, Odyssey app. Uh, two sports stories in a week, man. Look uh, at you. My boss told me as long as the Lions keep staying relevant, I can do as many Lions episodes as I want. <laughs> and I, I took that to the bank. I was not going to have to, they were, she was not going to have to twist my arm on that one. So it was a, it's been a good, good past few days for me. Uh, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get 150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on today to get started. And uh, Scotty, how you doing on this? I was going to say sunny Thursday, but we have not seen the sun in better part of a week and a half at this point. It's this been a frigid minute. Thursday. How's that? Yeah, it's been a minute. Doing all right, man. Pretty... Uh... Pretty solid week. Pretty busy at the beginning for me, but a uh, little lighter load as the week goes along. So that's that's fantastic. And it should be speaking of lighter loads, it should be a lighter load of an episode for you guys as well. You know, no game to break down. We do have a game to preview in segment three, and obviously we'll get to that then. Uh, but segment one, you know, I've been seeing a lot of conversation already, kind of sparking on the internet, Scotty, about whether or not the Red Wings should be buyers or sellers at the deadline, and We've kind of been talking a little bit here and there the last couple of weeks about whether or not we should talk about it ourselves. The fan base is talking about it, but does the timing work out for us? It's still pretty early, but I think it's one of those things with the Red Wings in the hunt. It's worthy, worthy enough of a topic to at least broach. If in two months they're still in a similar position, should they be buyers or sellers? So that's what we're going to do here in segment one and a little bit in segment two if it finds finds traction, the conversation keeps going. But right now, Scotty, the Detroit Red Wings find themselves second in the wild card. What, two points out of third place in the division? It's a really tight race for third in the Atlantic and those two wild card spots. They're competing with Toronto. They're competing with Tampa. They're competing with teams like the, the Devils. So there's a lot of competition for these playoff spots for the wild card in particular. But of course that Atlantic division spot is still up for grabs. If the Red Wings are still in a same, in the same boat come March, late February, March, when the de deadline comes, are the Red Wings in your opinion, buyers, sellers, or the sneaky third option of neither. Yeah. I, uh, if they're where they are now, they're certainly not going to be sellers. We can, we can kind of punt that one. Uh, there's, there's no way, shape or form in which the wings are in the top four or top three in the division and are going to sell at the deadline. So we'll start with that one. That's an easy removal. Now we can continue the conversation and go, if they slip a little bit, then what happens? I think that that's, you know, that, that puts selling back on the table, but um, there, there is a 0% chance that if the wings are, you know, established in the top three or four in the division that they're going to be selling. So we'll, we'll start with that one. Um, I, I do think that stand Pat is a little bit more of a realistic option than maybe uh, given credit. I think that everybody loves to put all of their eggs kind of in the buy or sell basket. And the wings are just in a really unique position where they are still, uh, they're still growing. They're still kind of trending up. Their, their, their core, at least, is still very young, right? They, they still have a, a really young core to kind of build around a, as they get older. And they still have a boatload of prospects that are now all of the sudden, you know, th these prospects that when you and I started hosting this show together right, two and a half years ago or whatever it is now, um, it, it – it, we were talking about prospects in terms of being like years away, right? Like there was this big group of prospects that were all 
a, a, a couple of seasons away. And now all of those prospects are knocking on the door, right? And, and with GR has a lot of talent in it. And uh, Toledo, obviously, the last couple of years have ha- has had a lot of talent run through it as well. Um, so I, I it's it's a fine line, man. Like I, I think that uh, buying will absolutely be on the table. I think if I had to choose, I would say, uh, I think the way I would put it is a soft buy. I don't think the wings would be in a position uh, because they want long-term sustained success to be like, we are going to get rid of all of our future assets so that we can just go pedal to the metal for this year and next year. Um, but I also think that they have such a young core and they have so many assets, that a plethora of them, that they can't afford to shave off a couple of them and bring in some other assets in the short term as well. So uh, I would call it a, I would call it a soft buy. I think is where uh, is kind of what I think if the Wings are around this position on the deadline, what they'll end up doing. Yeah, and I'll I'll go even a step further that I think regardless of where their standings are in terms of if they're here or with a four or five point lead at third in the division, or maybe even closing on a second, I can't see a future in which Iserman mortgages the future that they have. Yeah, that won't happen. It just, I I think regardless, he's not going to flush away the, all the drafts from the Iser plan Mm -hmm. and all the, the acquisition of draft picks and whatnot that he's done over the years for, uh, for one or two players that, that, that won't happen precisely. And that is because of exactly what you said. Eisenman is trying to build a team of sustained success. You don't want the Detroit Red Wings to become the Columbus Blue Jackets of was 1920 when they swept the Lightning. You don't want to mortgage your entire future. What a fun for, series that was. What a though. fun series. There are, <laughs> there, there are no words. Uh, you don't want to become the Columbus Blue Jackets of a few years ago when you mortgage your entire future just to make win one playoff series and then have to restart all over again. So I am completely lockstep with you, Scotty, that if they do buy, at this deadline, assuming again, that they are in the same spot that they are in now come late, early March, I think the deadline's March 8th, then it'll be a soft buy where you maybe trade some of your lower tier prospects for a couple of depth players to help just fill out the holes in your roster. Or you just stand pat all together. And Iserman goes, I want to see what I have in the guys on, already on this roster because, and circling back to it, there's no way in my mind that trading guys like Edvinson, Casper, Danielson, Pelica, or first or second round picks will ever be on the table, except for maybe like the maybe the second round picks that you have duplicates of, right? Because for instance, they traded for Jabrinkit and gave up one of their duplicate first. They gave up, uh, they're giving up whichever one is uh, lower, the Boston or the, re- the mm-hmm. Detroit one, I believe. So, that's the only instance where I can see you give up a, a draft pick is if it's one that you have a duplicate of or it's a low-level draft pick. I don't think if you're in this position, you're selling either because why? I mean, that's a kick to the balls of the players in that locker room. They fought hard to get into that position, that's, and yeah, they're in the race, happen. and then Iserman pulls the plug. I think if you're in this position, more than likely, Iserman will say, I want to see what this group's got, and then we'll continue to grow in the offseason get more, bring more of the younger guys up, things of that nature. And maybe in the deadline, we'll acquire a depth player or two to help fill out the roster, unless he gets an absolute steal on a guy, which is also possible because it's, that'd be very Iserman, but all in all, Scotty, just to kind of address this, this fervor that's been going on the Red Wings fan base. I think it's either stand Pat or soft by like you were saying. So again, just lockstep with you. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, that doesn't mean that I don't think they could they could trade a, a prospect that uh, is like decently highly regarded within the fan base in the front office, and maybe even again like a second round pick that they have a duplicate of or something like that. I don't think that's completely out of the question. And um, if uh, I, I, I just I don't think there's no part of me that thinks it's going to be like this uber aggressive, you know, like all out, all out type of buy. That's all. Like I, I, I don't mean that from a perspective of quality of prospect. I mean that more of a quantity of traits uh, than, than anything else. I, it, it wouldn't shock me if a solid, you know, B or even B plus caliber, you know, prospect and a decent pick went out the door. If you could get somebody that 
has multiple years and is in their mid twenties and can help you, you know, score goals or is a great, you know, like top pair or top four defenseman, or, you know, I don't know, maybe a goalies on the market, you know, that can only be a, a good acquisition for the wings at this point. Like there are, the, the wings are not a roster without holes in it. So uh, there, there are certainly players that if they are young, controllable contracts and can fill that hole that the wings would be able to probably, or be, would be willing rather to pay a decent price to get. I, I just, they're not going to like deplete the entire farm and draft. That's all. Yeah. And that's exactly it. They're not going to, they're not, I don't, I don't see a reality where they go out there and trade for a rental. No matter the quality, yeah. if they're well, going to trade for anyone yeah. at the deadline, it's going to be someone with tenure, somebody that's going to be here at least next year. I know the name Jacob Chitrin has been floating around. I'd be crazy if you, you poach another player from the senators, <laughs> <laughs> the year they were going to finally compete and you poach two of the players that were supposed to help them, you know, go on to the next level. Uh, he's got another year on his contract. I believe last I checked. So, I mean, that's an option, but you're not going to have the leverage you did when you got to bring it like to bring it forced his way here. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to get a guy like Chitrin, you have to also keep in mind what a highly talented two way defender, like he would get on a market, especially with one year left on his deal. I think with anything, Chitrin would probably be more of an off season trade for the senators sure, than sure. a deadline trade. But I mean, the phone's going to be ringing. So, yeah. and yeah, you know, rentals are weird because the, I don't know if it's cheap enough, like the, you know, the wings may do it, but like, yeah, I, they're not going to, again, they're not going to empty the farm for a rental. Certainly the Red Wings essentially got their rentals in the off season. Yeah. <laughs> when you think about it, Shane Goss, the spare Daniel Sprong, James Reimer. Those are guys that probably, I don't see Goss, the spare getting re-signed. I, because then you'd uh, continue the block blocking of Edvinson and Johansson down in the minors, unless you trade one of your other Fords that are on a longer term contract. We're getting off topic. Basically, to keep it timely, standing pat or uh, soft, soft buy. Thank you. We'll come back in segment two. We'll update you guys on some injury news and some roster moves uh, in segment two of Lockdown Red Wings. Got to talk to you guys today about FanDuel. The NFL regular season has wrapped up, and we are on to the NFC title game. And there's still time to get in on, in on the action with FanDuel. In fact, I'd argue there's never been a better time to get in on the action with the title games, both title games this weekend, and then the big game two weekends from that. Uh, America, FanDuel is America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get 150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet that's a hundred dollars 150 dollars in bonus bets win or lose the app is so easy to use there are so many ways to bet like with same game parlays you can find bets in the new explore tab and make a parlay in the parlay hub the best way to find popular parlays and so much more so visit fanduel.com slash lockdown and make your first bet a layup fanduel official partner of the nfl Segment two, Lockdown Red Wings podcast. Uh, segment two is just going to be kind of a news and notes segment. It's normally we start the show with this, but we're going to put it here in segment two because it kind of helps lead in naturally to the preview against the uh, Philadelphia Flyers. But before that, I forgot to do this at the start of the show. Michael Rasmussen stick giveaway. Do it. We got a sweepstakes running on YouTube. That's a, the, the official post where you can find and enter is on our, it's a community post. So find our YouTube community post, hit subscribe, and then fill out the Google form that is on there. It is only applicable to US customers and you have to be 18 years or older, but you can get in a Michael Rasmussen game you stick by just subscribing and filling out that form. So find that YouTube community post. Anyways, Scotty, Patrick Kane was a full participant in practice today, according to Daniela Bruce. Uh, Derek Lalone said in the media available the media availability afterwards that it would end up being how he felt that would be the determining factor. They wanted to know how he felt after his first full practice back before Can I making say that means nothing. I like you know what I think is that what I don't every think single it. that yes, like that's just how playing works. Like what <laughs> if you could be fully healthy if you wake up one day and you don't feel good, then like yeah, you're not gonna play like that's that that doesn't mean anything that's that's how every single player in that locker room actually deals with this on a daily basis so thank you 
Yes. So I just thought it was funny. Like, I mean, he does say that all the depends time. Depends on how he feels. Well, no kidding. Thank, thank you. I would imagine it does. Yeah. The takeaway from this, Scotty, isn't that it's going to depend on how he feels. It's that he's practicing again yeah. and he's on the ice with the team. For I sure. did see a report. He was the first one to leave the ice as yes. well, yeah. but he did participate in practice, did participate in drills. So that's a good sign that he could be returning. I know worst case scenario, he's going to return after the all-star break, which honestly might be the best case scenario for him just to have that like what, two, three weeks off to heal up. Yeah. It sounds and like help. that's super in the realm of possibility. Yeah. And just to help with the push for the playoffs post. Or like, maybe break. like game before. So that you can kind of get a little loose and then big break. And then, you know, after the all-star break kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And then the other note is JT comfort did not practice. Uh, He's feeling under the weather. Derek Lalone said during the media availability after the practice that he's just kind of feeling uh, he's been feeling ill the last couple of days and it just kind of peaked today. And so they just gave him the day off. It seems to be going around the locker room, obviously. So it depended on how he felt. Dependent on how he felt, Scotty. Yes. Cool. (laughs) <laughs> you're you're on one today buddy I just, it doesn't mean that like yeah that's just like how this works like yeah of course yeah so uh jo- i know joe valeno filled in his spot on the line rushes <clears throat> as well as playing fourth line center himself yeah but it's it's a good it was reassuring to hear that it wasn't an injury and just illness related but we also know that jake wolman was knocked out for like three straight games yeah. with an illness Wild, so it's not something to take lightly And uh, it's been going around the locker room. Also, I do wonder sometimes, and I'm not going to take credit for this. This was a good theory that somebody I I frequently talk with about hockey came up with. And she told me that her theory as to why the Wolman cider line didn't get as many minutes last night, fewest even strength minutes in the league against or on the team against the um, stars stars. Thank you. I was drawing a blank is because maybe cider was feeling under the weather. But that's just a that's a theory. I know our theory was that they had just played 25 minutes and they had hammered them and they wanted to give them a break. But that would make sense, too, because if it's going around the locker room, God knows how many of those players are sick right now. And that would be horrible timing with how good this January is. And if that's the case, Jake Wallman, patient zero. Bad look, buddy. Bad look. <laughs> was it him? I don't know. I'm just talking. I feel like I don't know, man. I feel like uh, cost clean cost in a while ago had a sickness. Like a month ago. He was down with the sickness, all right. I don't know. Yeah. And then the final one is he confirmed that Alex Lyon is starting against the team that drafted him, the Philadelphia Flyers. I like this. And the reason I like this is because, one, it tells me that the coaching staff has full faith that Alex Lyon will, one, bounce back, and two, that he is kind of the guy for the Red Wings right now, which makes sense, right? He's had one really bad game. In the last however many consecutive starts he's had, like give him the opportunity to get it right on the ice. And plus, maybe it also showcases how little faith they have in James Reimer. But I'm going to look at the glass half full aspect of this that they just trust <laughs> Alex Lyon. I mean, maybe. I, I, I think it's, um, yeah, to me, this is just like this is the biggest layup of a decision there is. Uh, this is a, you know, a no brainer. Uh, Lion has comfortably been the best goalie on your roster this year. So uh, one bad game should not single-handedly change that and, and change what he's done this season. So, yeah, I'm I'm all for sending him back out there as well, obviously. Um, and, uh, yeah, hopefully he rebounds. Well, and again, it's against the team that drafted him. Maybe he shouldn't the team have that- rebounds. Maybe he bounces back. Maybe he bounces back. And it's the team that kind of buried him in the AHL, whether deserved or not. It, it, yeah. didn't, it wasn't until literally last year where he kind of broke out and proved I can compete at the NHL level, even if it's just a hot stretch or two. And yeah. he's done that again this year with the Detroit Red Wings. So maybe that's part of the decision to start him again, despite the bad start is this is your chance to prove Philly wrong. So it's, it's going to be really exciting. If you're the Detroit Red Wings, these two teams have met, twice already in the season the first time they were shut out by samuel urson one to nothing and the second time the red wings won seven to six in a shootout after blowing a big that was lead. A crazy <laughs> game yeah patrick did you not like my rebound joke i thought it was kind of funny i i understood it but it was not oh, that, that's what I, yeah <laughs> did you think my joke was funny i understood it that's yeah. great thank there you, you go. thanks anytime buddy anytime <laughs> so yeah and that's where we're headed now is Preview the Philadelphia Philadelphia Flyers. So uh, stay tuned to segment three where we do just that. 
We're driven by the search for better. But when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't search to search at all. Don't search, match with Indeed. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed fa- Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work, use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. And Indeed doesn't just help you hire faster. 93% of employers agree Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites, according to a recent Indeed survey. And, you know, I wasn't part of that survey, but if I was, I would agree. I said it yesterday and I'll say it again very briefly. I've used Indeed to hire and it is just so easy. And it's just a, it is a very nice job of compiling all those quality candidates in a, a easy to read format. So use Indeed if you guys are in the hiring market. Uh, and listeners of this show get a seventy five dollars sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visible more visibility at indeed.com slash locked on. Just go to indeed.com slash locked on right now and support our show by seeing you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Indeed, you do. Shut up. Okay. <laughs> this has been, I feel like this has been a hostile episode. <laughs> <clears throat> Segment three, locked on Red Wings podcast. All right. So the Wings are playing their third and final matchup against the Philadelphia Flyers, as noted. Previously in segment two, they are one and one against the Flyers so far this season. Scotty, what can we expect out of the Philly, uh, the the Philadelphia Flyers as they come to town? I, the Philadelphia, the Philadelphia Flyers. Flyers. Yeah. Flyers. I couldn't decide if I wanted to say Philly or Philadelphia, but <laughs> yeah, clearly, I cut, I cut um, the middle. That, yeah, I mean, look, this is uh, another game in a long stretch of really tough teams uh there's you know big debate on if it's just like the tortorella effect or you know if the the flyers maybe have uh, have turned a corner a little bit more as far as the players on the ice um this is a, a again this is a <laughs> right in the thick of a really tough stretch the flyers are playing really good hockey uh they are um i want to say last time i looked they were third in the division um they i mean there is they they are playing very, very good puck lately. And uh, obviously it has been a uh, a back and forth season series so far as well. So, uh, and then we all, you know, know the history of the wings and just struggling against the Flyers in general. So yeah, man, uh, this is, like I said, I guess broken record a little bit. I think feel like they've already said it three or four times, but just another game in a long line of tough games. They play good defense. You're going to have to find ways to score goals and and you're going to need Alex line back on his game as well. Yeah. I mean, this is a, the definition of grit is the Philadelphia Flyers. They're yeah. not the most talented roster in the world, but with John Tortorella behind the bench, they've got that Tortorella bump. They're going to out hustle you in every instance. They're not for once. The Red Wings aren't facing a top 10 team when it comes to the advanced analytics in Corsi and expected goals, but they're a top 15 team still. I believe they're, 11th in the league in Corsi and 15th. The Flyers in the league are in second in Metro, by the way. Last time I looked, I uh, they were third. They have surpassed Carolina. Yeah, no, they they are second in the Metro and have been for quite a minute. They are a streaky hockey team, though. I was looking at their recent stretches. They're on an L three. They're on an L three, following in what a, a W four, four or five getting wins. Yeah, they're six and four in their last ten, despite being on an L three. Yeah. And if you go back even further, you'll see that they go on win streaks and lose streaks, but they're a gritty team. They're, they're 11th in expected goals, four percentage. When it comes to Corsi, four percentage, I believe they are 14th in the league. So they're, they're still slightly above league average yeah. uh, when it comes to puck possession metrics and uh, their power play and penalty kill are middle of the road as well. I think their penalty kills really not middle of the road. Their penalty kills second in the league, buddy, buddy. Yeah, you just said they were middle of the road. I said they're not middle of the road. Oh, yes, you're right. Okay, you're, you're correct. <laughs> For some reason, I thought when you said that, you meant they were really bad, and I was like, no, they're not really bad. No, I, I think their power play is actually not good. very good. Their pen, their penalty kill is very good, which I guess if you want to say equals out to middle of the road, then hats off. Yeah, let's you. go for that reach instead of just saying I was completely wrong. Um, <laughs> I like that. That's a better equation. Yeah, their, their power play is ranked 28th in the league, and their penalty kill is second. Yeah. So, I mean... 
what else is new? Special teams is going to matter a big time for the Red Wings who score a lot of their goals on yeah. special teams and, again, and score a lot off the rush. And and that, yeah, the good penalty kill, gritty, grimy team doesn't score a lot of goals, but is doing really well. Sounds like a torts team. Yeah. Yeah. And I can tell you for sure one player the Red Wings will not be seeing uh, yeah. in this game, and it, that is Carter Hart. He has taken an indefinite leave of absence, and – he was one of three other NHL players and one other player who plays in Europe who took a leave of absence from their team just right before this news dropped about the 2018 World Junior uh, s- scandal investigation beginning to move ahead. But until we know for sure, until somebody is indicted or charged, it is irresponsible to come on here and say That's why Carter Hart has taken a leave of absence. Um, But regardless of that, this 2018 World Junior Championship scandal that has taken place, regardless of who is getting charged, who isn't getting charged, who's guilty, who's not, why players are taking a leave of absences, is one of the blackest marks on not just Team Hockey Canada, but hockey as a whole. Uh, The events that took place in 2018 that are alleged to have taken place in 2018 at, at least uh, is, is just disgusting. And those five unnamed players that were named in the investigation, um, should they be proven guilty should absolutely be persecuted to the fullest extent of the law. And of course goes without saying never be allowed to play hockey ever again. So again, it's, it's irresponsible for us to make any assertions about, who is and who isn't being charged because it's still not out. And we're not going to know more until February 5th. That is when uh, the, the London Ontario police are going to have a news conference and discuss it. But regardless, the, the, the accusations, the, the alleged sexual assault that took place in 2018 is a horrific mark on the, the sport of hockey as a whole. Yes, I, I agree with you. And I think that you handled that well, I, 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 this is obviously a horrible situation and another mark on hockey over the last several years. And um, just as a whole, I think that it is important to report on facts. And we are obviously not reporting, we are relaying our uh, uh, opinion and analyzing whatever. So that's why. Uh, We are not going to come on here and say, you know, one way or another guaranteed or, you know, factual stuff. At the time of this recording, that's all we know is what Brian uh, just said. So uh, but there's a lot of resources out there and a lot of people that are covering this event. Um, Obviously, the Globe and Mail, Robin Doolittle and Rachel Brady wrote an article about it. And then The Athletic has had uh, multiple articles on it. Uh, Katie Strang and Jenna West did uh, the big one that came out on a Wednesday afternoon. Uh, there's articles that are constantly being updated. So um, to keep, I think it's very, very important to not sweep this under the rug, which is why we are talking mm-hmm. about it and why this is not something that um, we're, we're just gonna, you know, like kind of go, Oh, it's just personal reasons, whatever. But um, uh, again, we, we don't know any of the facts at at the time that we're doing this uh but a lot of great reporters out there will have uh their their pulse on the situation and will be reporting the facts as they come out um so uh yeah another tough situation for the game of hockey but uh yeah i don't don't know how to transition from that back to the flyers game but um yeah certainly certainly something that will be talked about in the hockey world for days and weeks to come. It pretty much guarantees you're going to see Samuel Erson because yeah. I highly doubt they'll see Cal Peterson, who is their third string tendy for sure. Uh, Samuel Erson's been having a good year. Uh, he didn't have a great outing his last time out 23 games played. He had a nine Oh five save percentage. Um, that's, that's pretty dang good. He's been, that's above league average. They've gotten pretty much above average play from every aspect of the game, despite what their roster may look outside of Travis Konechny. So they're not an easy team, and that's what it comes down to. The Philadelphia Flyers are a tough team. Uh, even if they're not like analytical darlings, like some of the teams the Red Wings have faced lately, it's not a team. They're a team that's going to out-hustle you for a win. In fact, that's something that the Red Wings have kind of you know prided themselves on. They're not going to outpossess you, but they're gonna they're gonna make you pay for your mistakes, and yeah. that's something that the Red Wings have done all season long. So it's going to be a fun game. 
It's going to be a good matchup, and LCA is going to be rocking on a Thursday night. Absolutely. So, um, Scott, you got any final thoughts, man? Um, I don't think so, man. We ball. We ball. We'll be back with a new episode tomorrow, breaking down that game and previewing the game against the Vegas Golden Knights tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. Same time, same place. It's your team every day. Every day. Every day.